Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm Pastor Brian Crane, pastor here um, at Eternal Life Lutheran Church. Welcome you all here today as we celebrate the faith and resurrection given to our sister in Christ, Jean Fernhopper. Um, hopefully, I think you all do, but we have an order of worship for today that we'll be using. Everything for the service should be in there, including the hymns. Um, although the hymn numbers are also posted on the boards, if you'd like to use the hymnal for that. Following the service today, we'll have time for food and refreshment and conversation in the in the parish hall. So it looks like we have lots of food. So hope you're able to stay and, and enjoy that. More time to uh, remember uh, June, share memories, and give thanks to the Lord for, for all that he has uh, done um, for her and through her uh, to bless to bless us here today. Thank you also to Janet uh, Hunter Mark, our organist, for playing for us this morning. And so we'll begin our service uh, this morning with our first hymn, number 801, How Great Thou Art.
drag of this man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In holy baptism, June was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were, we were buried, buried therefore, therefore with him by baptism into death, death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Our intro is from Psalm 116. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pains of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to June and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 60, uh, 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And you will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of, their th of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you're able, please stand. If we have died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If, if we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn, number 748.
and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, especially you, Gay, Joy, and Don, uh, again, want to ex express and extend my sympathies to you um, as we gather today to, to say goodbye, in a, in a sense, although it's not goodbye forever, it's more like the old German Auf Wiedersehen, see you again, but still, it's a loss. Um, I want to express my sympathies to you. Thank you for your kindness um, to me and to our congregation. And um, really, although funerals are, are tough occasions, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to gather this day and to say goodbye, but also to remember and give thanks to God for, for your mom and for all that um, he did through her and uh, for you and for your family and for even us here at Eternal Life Lutheran Church. Um, June did me a big favor. Um, she left uh, some notes in her hymnal um, with hymn uh, suggestions and other instructions that she would, would like for her funeral. She also said she wanted to have a, a strong male voice singing, so ho hopefully I helped with that. Um, so that was very helpful to me, um, you know, planning the service for today. So the hymns were um, based on her instructions and, and suggestions. She also left um, a poem, and I wanted to share that poem with you. Just, she wanted it to be used in the, in the service. And I think, well, I'll just read it, because I think it speaks a lot about June and kind of her, in a little time that I got to know her, her, her attitude, and I mean that in a good way, her, her strength, um, her confidence in the Lord in the midst of many, many challenges in life that, that you know, far better than I do. Um, but just in getting to know her in the last year and a half or so, especially the last few months, and then and as you uh, put down in her obituary, just some of the things she went through, and yet she had this strong faith in, in our Lord. And so I wanted to share this poem with you. It's titled, I'm Free. And the poem uh, reads, don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. You guys know that, doing all the cleaning it and going through things that are at our home. We thank you for all that you've given to us already. Uh, the poem goes on, I found that peace at close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free. I've been reflecting on that the last few days, putting my thoughts together for the sermon, because this idea of being set free, um, I understand a little bit why she Said, said that, why she wanted this poem as part of her, her service. And I, that's because I've come to realize how much she went through in life. But what's kind of amazing to me is in, in my interactions with her, in both when she was still able to come to church and then when I saw her at home, you wouldn't really have known that she went through so much. 
Um, she had such a, a warmth about her, a positive attitude, a you know, smile. She was always, at least in my you know, interactions with her, friendly and kind. I'm sure there were days when she was frustrated, um, as we all get at times. Um, but I understand, I think, why she feels or felt that she was looking forward to that day when she would be set free. You know, to, to lose not just one husband, you know, your dad at such a young age, but then to be widowed two more times to go through that. And then that terrible accident that Joanne Fabrics, you know, can you imagine just going to the store, any store, the, the fabric store to buy fabric to make quilts? You know, she has a, one of her quilts runners is on the table there. And then just out of nowhere, a car comes screaming into the front of the store and she's trapped underneath the car while it's still running. And I came to I came to know when she was in the hospital how, how much she hated being confined. It's you know, claustrophobic, I guess you would say. You can just imagine. I mean, I was thinking about this, all that she went through. And yet when I talked to her, you wouldn't have known. You know, she just continued to, to radiate a sense of, of joy and and um, and I see that in, in you all. In the little time I've got to know you, that that, that kind of positive attitude toward life and, and uh, toward the Lord is has been passed on to you. Because it would be so easy to get angry with God, I would think. Why is this happening, God? I, I'm just imagining. You know, I'm not saying she said these things, but I I think I might. Why is this happening, God? You know, what else are you going to put me through? You know, I lose one husband, I lose another husband, I go through this thing at Joanne Fabrics, I lose another husband, and you know, all the other things, all the moves, all the different places she lived, all the experiences, some of which were good. It wasn't all bad, I'm not trying to say it was. But still, you can feel a little bit like Job, you know, from the Old Testament. Like, what, what else do I have to endure? And then, you know, begin this um, battle with, with leukemia. And yet through it all, you know, she, she maintained a strong faith in her Lord, a positive attitude toward life, a strong love for family. Where, where does that come from? I guess this is the point I'm trying to get to. And it's for me, it only comes from one place, and that is from the Lord. She knew, she knew the Lord. She knows the Lord. She's with the Lord. Um, from little on, you know, she grew up in the church and had a love for the church and a love for the music of the church and um, to sing. And she knew of Jesus as, as her Savior. And so as we sang in just in that last hymn, she knew that she was but a stranger here, that heaven was her, was her home. And not because of anything she had done or could do or anything that we could do. It's because of what her Savior Jesus had done for her. You know, that he himself uh, went through terrible uh, agony and tribulation. We remember that especially during this season of Lent, you know, the sufferings that he endured. Uh, he's the holy, sinless, perfect Son of God, and yet look, look how they treated him. Look at what happened to him. You know, uh, he was maligned and ridiculed falsely uh, accused and condemned. And they paraded him with a, with a crown of thorns and a, put a robe on his back and made fun of him and said, and they nailed him to a cross and said, if you're the son of God, come down from the cross and then we'll believe in you. Yet he endured. He paid for our sins so that we would have that gift of eternal life. And June she knew this. In December, um, I visited her at her home, and she was feeling really good that day. Um, she was really positive. She was always positive, but she was feeling really good. She was telling me about how she was walking through Las Palmas and, 
and uh, you know, just she had, you know, folks would come in to check on her, but everything was everything was going great. And she she told me a story about when she was um, I don't remember what age it was, but she was pretty little, grade school at least, um, where she sang um, for one of the uh, Christmas Eve services at Trinity there in Lincoln. And she, she was um, telling me about singing, and she sang part of um, Martin Luther's Christmas hymn, um, From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. And so um, I wanted to share that with you, because I think it ties in with, with uh, just her attitude um, and love for, toward life and her love for the Lord. Now it's a long stanza, it's a long hymn, it's 15 stanzas long, so I'm not going to read all of it today. But um, just a few stanzas of it. Welcome to earth, thou noble guest, through whom the sinful world is blessed. Thou comes to share my misery. What thanks shall I return to thee? The Lord, the creator of all, came and took on our flesh to share my misery. What thanks shall I return to thee? And then the hymn continues. Our Lord, who has created all, how weak art, art thou, how poor and small, that thou dost choose thine infant bed where humble cattle lay thee fed. His first bed was a manger, a feeding trough. Where earth a thousand times is fair, beset with gold and jewels rare, and yet were far too poor to be a narrow cradle, Lord, for thee. And then the stanza that she remembered, she had committed to memory. I learned, I learned a little different translation, so, um, so I had to like borrow her hymnal so we could sing it together. Um, but this one. Ah, uh, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft undefiled within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, may thee a bed soft undefiled. His first bed was a manger in Bethlehem. Now we pray that he would make himself a bed soft undefiled within my heart, that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. That the Lord was with her had claimed her as his own in the waters of baptism. Um, as I said, Jean grew up in the church there at Trinity. She was later confirmed uh, in the Christian faith at Trinity. Sorry about my microphone. Um, her confirmation verse we read from John chapter 10. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. She knew that she was one of Jesus' little lambs. And so because of that, then the hymn continues, My heart for very joy doth leap, My lips no more can silence keep, I too must sing with joyful tongue That sweetest ancient cradle song. No wonder she liked to sing so much. Glory to God in highest heaven, who unto us his Son hath given, while angels sing with pious mirth, a glad new year to all the earth. In the poem, it says toward the end, um, perhaps my time seemed all too brief, don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free. I'm sure that she wouldn't want you to be too sad today because she has gone to be with not only her Lord, but with all her loved ones who've gone in the faith of Jesus. And yet, we do grieve today. 
because someone you love, someone you love dearly, you've known your whole life is no longer here. But as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, um, he doesn't want us to grieve as others do who have no hope. Yes, we grieve, because death separates us from those we love. Death is our enemy. When God created this world, there was no death. Death came with sin. And because we sin, we all die. So we grieve when someone we love has died, but we don't grieve, as Paul says, as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. The season of Lent, we remember, especially the sufferings and death of Jesus and why he suffered and died, to pay for our sins so that we would be his forever by the forgiveness of our sins. But Lent doesn't end on Good Friday, or maybe the season of Lent does, but our, our remembrance of Jesus doesn't end on Good Friday. But Easter morning, we gather to celebrate and remember his glorious resurrection from the dead. That because he conquered death for us by his own death for our sins and his rising again Easter morning, we too shall live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So even as we grieve today and in the weeks and months to come, we don't grieve as those who have no hope. Our hope is in Jesus, who conquered death for us and promises a place for all who trust in him, as Jean did. And so we look forward to that day when, by his grace, we will join her and all the saints and angels to join in singing our praise to Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you're able, uh, please stand as we continue with the prayers. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of June and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for June and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. 
Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope for the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, number 878. 